Uh, yeah, I think it opened me up to a whole different audience, and I don't think the world um, knew who I was at that specific moment. I think that song opened it up for the whole world to um, be introduced to my music. Yeah. Let it bump, though. eller inte Hard Knock Life blev en mega hit men ingenting av det här hade hänt om det inte var för hiphop producenten The 45 King He made the pen and then and then boom boom then and then and then one of the most famous hip hop beats Tjugo år efter musikalens premiär fick han idén att sampla Hard Knock Life. Och trots att The 45 King är ansvarig för flera hiphopklassiker är han lite av en doldis som omges av en hel del mystik. Han ställer sällan upp på intervjuer. He, he goes in and out of the scene. You know, he'll come back and then he'll go for it like that right there. He made that song, then he came back and made a stand for Eminem. He does these great and, and remarkable cultural things that just grab culture. He's actually a genius in that way. And then he just disappears for years. I was watching television. They had the Broadway, um, and he came back to Broadway. Commercial went. I said, "Wow, hey, you could put a beat under that. That could work." So anyway, um, I was in the Salvation Army, and they have um, LPs for a quarter, and for you know, yeah, for a quarter. So I was looking through. This means when you look through records. And I seen Annie. I said, oh, great. Bought it for a quarter and bought it back. And I was looking for the horns. Be, 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 be. I couldn't find the horns. And then um, I found the kids going, it's a hard knock line for us. It's and a hard um, knock line for us. Get a maybe that day or maybe um, a few days later, I put a drum line under it. Um, at that time, I lived in a building where I could turn my music up loud. Played it real loud and went upstairs and heard it through the floor. Boom, 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 boom. And you know, I said, wow, this is hot. Never thought I was going to sell it. The murder scene. You know me well. The 45 King ger låten till kompisen och superstar DJ Kid Capri som i sin tur bestämmer sig för att spela den på en hiphop gala där Jay-Z uppträder. And what not? The, the key to this one was paying attention. I was actually coming off stage. I was doing the show and I was coming off stage and in the house DJ who was playing in between the sets was playing this beat. I was I was playing this this plate, this record that 45 King had gave me which was going on my album. And um I played it the first three shows and people would run up and say, "Okay, how did you get the Annie with the beat and all that?" you know. And I just had a performance about to run in my dressing room and probably put a towel around my neck. <laughs> You know, for some reason, performers do that. But um, why is that? They're sweating. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but sometimes it just looks good. Um, <laughs> the so I heard the track and I told everybody, "Oh wait, stop! What is that?" And I ran around the, the arena inside the thing and went to the back and got found the DJ. It was Kid Capri, and I said, "Uh." 
What is that, man? He went crazy, you know, you know, where'd you get that? I said, you want it for your album? He said, yeah. I put him on the phone with 45 King right there. And next thing you know, two weeks later, it was a smash, you know, biggest record to date for Jay-Z. And he has a lot of big records, but that was, that was a big one. I'm almost sure, you know, maybe that we recorded it in this uh, house in Manhattan somewhere. The only thing I really remember about the studio that we was in, it was in New York somewhere. I came there, I bought the two-inch reel, I tracked the two, I tracked Hard Knock Life at my house and everything, and you made sure all the meters was going, bam, bam, bam. And I think um, there was only maybe five different tracks to my production, because I put all, all of the drums on one track for the engineer can't mess it up. Don't mess up my drums. And um, he did his vocals. And I remember that he did it on a, on a Neumann microphone. It's like the, uh, maybe the U47, but it's a r real long microphone. Frank Sinatra used to use that microphone. And then if you watch Dream Girls, Beyonce, at the end of the movie, when she's mad at her man for whatever, she's singing on a, it's the same microphone. It's, it's the best mic. It's the best, uh, it's the best. That's one of the songs that, well, almost like a conversation for me. It's not anything to think about. The chorus already dictates where the song should go and what should be said. So I'm, I'm sure I just, I probably wanted, I probably did that song in maybe five minutes. I was lucky enough to see Jay um, lay down the vocals. He didn't have any papers. He did it in one take and that's Jay-Z. Two, three, four.